So you are creating a copilot in Microsoft Copilot Studio and you need to know how to create a new custom variable. Well, fortunately for you, you are in the right place because that is exactly what we're going to be doing in a step by step guide in this video right now. I mean, we're going to be talking about topic variables, global variables, the different properties, how to troubleshoot some common variable issues that I have been experiencing, how you can then utilize variables within your copilot. I mean, it is all in this video right now. All right, so here I am within Microsoft Copilot Studio and here I'm looking at a practically brand new coffee copilot bot and all I've really done on this is created two custom entities and one of which that we're gonna be using within this and that is the coffee type entity which have some different options that we have already created and we will talk about more in the video. Now, if you are unsure what entities are or how to create them, I'm gonna recommend you check out that video linked here or at the end of this video, I will also include a link to that video at that point in time. Now, let's assume you understand what entities are and how they relate to variables. Let's go ahead and create our variables. So here I am in Copilot Studio. I'm gonna go ahead and navigate to our new custom Copilot excuse me, our new custom coffee topic. Now, if you are unsure what variables are, variables are simply just containers. It is where you store input information where somebody says something and you wanna capture that, you store that data within a variable and then Copilot can then use it. Now, Copilot can use it to state that variable in a following message. It could pass that input to a Power Automate flow. There are a ton of different examples for where you could use variables and how you need them. And effectively every single Copilot bot you're gonna build is gonna utilize at least some level of variables. Now there are a couple different types of variables, but really the only two you need to know, at least for this video, are topic variables and global variables. And we're gonna show you how to create one of each. Now, topic variables are pretty simple. We are looking at our coffee topic. It just means that the content within that topic variable is kept within this topic. If we leave this topic and go to another topic throughout the conversation and then come back, we're gonna lose the information that's stored there. Whereas a global variable lives outside of topics and that information is accessible throughout the entire conversation. It's, it's topic agnostic. One last thing before we create our variable is that variables have types. You can have a string, a Boolean, number, there are a couple others as well, date and times, things like that, where the Variable type determines you know, the type of content that will be stored within that variable. And this is really important because you can't put numbers into a string variable. You can't put string, var string content into a date and time variable. It's very important that the variable types are kind of in alignment with each other. And what actually sets the variable type is not a, uh, a preference when you create the variable, what sets it is Copilot actually sets it automatically based off of the first conversation node or the first action that uses that variable. So it can be kind of tricky. In my opinion, I kind of hope Microsoft changes this, but nonetheless, I'll, I'll show you what I mean if, if this isn't making sense. So there's really two ways to create variables and both of which are very similar. They're gonna be from actually within a topic. Now, if I go ahead and click this plus button to add a new conversation node, as I'll call it, you can see that we have an ask a question node. And so what this is gonna do is create a variable and this is gonna save the user's response as that variable. Now, let's say in our example, we are a coffee shop and we need to determine what sort of coffee this person would like to order. Now, let's say in our example that we are a coffee shop and we need to determine what sort of coffee this person would like to order and we have three options. We have a light roast, a medium roast, and a dark roast. I can ask the question like, hey, what sort of coffee would you like? Now, like I had said before, I've actually already created a custom coffee type entity. That's what this identify is here. This is going to kind of set the sort of information that this variable is going to store. So let's say for example that the question I'm asking will give me information on the city that this person lives. 
I'm going to want to use the city entity or let's say it's a date or let's say it's an email. I think you guys get the point. You even have person's name down here, which we will use in another example for our global variable. But at this point in time, it's showing our custom ones here at the top. We want this question to be set using our coffee type entity. And that's because we have these three options already set up. Now, you will see that it has created this first variable for us, the save the user's response as variable one. You can actually click here if you wanted to save it as a variable that you already had created, then you will see them in the options here. There are also some, some system variables that can already be set up for your bot when you create it. But you will see if I actually, instead of clicking on the arrow, actually click on the kind of text itself, it opens up this variable properties. This is where you can rename and change the scope of the variable. So instead of var1, let's change the name of this to coffee type. And you will see here that within topic variables, I said earlier that they are limited to within this topic, but you can actually pass these variable inputs from topic to topic if you have the correct settings and everything enabled. So you'll see here that these are not enabled by default, but you can have it return, receive values from other topics or return values to original topics if you choose to enable that. If you wanna make this a global topic, you can also do that here. Again, we're not necessarily doing that in, in this scenario for our coffee type, but I can go ahead and save this. Now, you'll notice that right next to the words coffee type, there's choice. That is what's saying, hey, this is a variable with a type of choice. Now, if I were to change this entity to say person's name, because I know that's a string, you'll see that this just changed the variable to a type of string. So there's nothing that I actually can do to set the type a variable is. The first action that refers to that variable will do that. Now. Let me just let me just show you kind of another example and the error that might happen regularly. Let's say, and this doesn't really make a ton of sense in this example, but let's say also in this example, I am wanting to set this same coffee type again, you'll see that I'm getting an error because up here, I'm setting the coffee type variable to of type string, but now in this question, I wanna set our string variable to a multiple choice option. That's what's being defined by the entity. And it's throwing this error. It's saying, hey, it's expected a string, but it's been assigned an embedded option set. This can't work. So just be aware of how to do that. Just be aware of this limitation because it has gotten me several times and is fairly annoying at this point in time to work around. Now, let me change this back to coffee type and save our topic. So that is a topic variable. Let's also showcase a global variable. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch up topics and go to our conversation start. Now I don't know if this is completely advisable, but let's say that for the beginning of the conversation, we want to ask the person, hey, what's your name? And then we want to save that person's name as a global variable and refer to them throughout the conversation so that our bot feels little bit more personable. I can create the type in the question. I can scroll down to the person's name entity and I'm going to actually open this up and save this to name. And I want this again to be a global variable. Now there are some additional preferences here under global. You can allow it to carry between sessions, which is when I t last talked to copilot, if it wants to not have to ask for my name again, that those are sessions. Like I talked to it at 11 a.m. and then I come back, close my window and come back and talk to it at 2 p.m. a few hours later and it can still store that variable or external sources can set these values. So I'm not gonna get into the examples. I feel like there's there's too many to list here, but these are some, some extra capabilities of global variables. Now, you'll notice that this adds the kind of global period prefix to our variable. If I go ahead and save this and refresh our test here, you'll see it's gonna say, hey, what is your name? And I'm gonna go ahead and say, hey, my name is Griffin. So something that's cool that I haven't necessarily showed yet is you do have a variables pane um, within topics while you're looking at them and you can actually see 
if you switch it to this test tab, what these variables have been set to throughout your conversation. And you'll notice that under my global.name string, the variable that we've created, it's now setting the value to Griffin. Now, if I go ahead and trigger our coffee topic, and I can click on it and, and navigate there. If I look at this global variable still, even though I'm in a different topic now, it still has passed the, the name of Griffin. So it could say, what sort of coffee do you like, Griffin? And instead of typing that, I can select the little variable here and select the name within our options. Hit save. Let me just refresh. And there it's referring to the variable that we set. And again, this is the, the global variable. This is how variables can be used throughout the conversation. You can store them in messages. You can, you can surface them in messages. You can surface them in questions, but you can also create conditional branching. So let's say that for example, if the coffee, t dependent on the coffee type, we need to execute a couple different things or ask some follow-up questions. Let's say for example, that dependent on the coffee type selection, we may need to ask an additional question. So here you can see that I can add a conditional branch and within that it's asking me to select a variable. I'm gonna go ahead and select coffee type and let's say if my coffee type is equal to medium roast, then we wanna do something. Now let's say my coffee shop only has one light roast option but it has two different medium roast options, right? then if they select medium roast, then we need to ask an additional follow-up question, right? And this could be, do you like A or B? And so now with this conditional branching, we can see that if they select medium roast, if the coffee type is equal to medium roast, then we want it to ask a follow-up question, do you like coffee A or B? And if not, then go to a different step. Let me go ahead and save this and just show you what this means practically. I hit a refresh and go type in my name, trigger the coffee topic. What sort of coffee do you like? Let me say I like light roast, right? You can see it, it'll show you the path. The coffee type is not equal to medium roast and so it follows this direction. And if I open up the variables, you can see here that our coffee type is equal to light roast and the variable one, which is set by coffee A and B is undefined because we never went down that path. Now, one final refresh just to make this all come together. I like medium roast. Oh, now it understands, hey, we want medium roast. Let's follow this direction. Do you like A or B? Let's say I like A. And now you can see that these have been updated accordingly. Now, if you're like me, sometimes understanding variables and entities and how they relate to each other, but they're different, but they're kind of the same thing can be confusing if that is you, you're gonna to wanna to check out this video here. And as promised, here is that entities video that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Thank you to you for seeing the end of the video. My name is Griffin Lickfeld, the host of the Citizen Developer channel. And I'm excited to connect with you in the next one.